everyone, and welcome to the Week 17 edition of Instant Replay, where I give you my take on the most controversial calls of the weekend. I'm Simon Bohr. We start in Toronto, where DC United used some physical play to contain MVP candidate Sebastian Jovinko. But this one in the 21st minute was a bit overboard. Defender Bobby Boswell with the off-the-ball rake of Jovinko's Achilles. That should have been a red card, folks, but referee Armando Villarreal doesn't spot it. And John Mills on Twitter wonders whether DC should have had a different player sent off in this one. It's the 89th minute, and look at how Facundo Coria goes in with the high studs on Ashton Morgan. He gets a yellow from Villarreal, but I think that should have been punished with a red for endangering the safety. Another two dangerous tackles at Toyota Stadium in Frisco. Thanks to Juancho, who highlighted this one to us in the fifth minute. Giles Barnes going in on Ryan Hollingshead. I know he gets the ball, but he just can't go through the player to do it. No foul was called, but I cringe when I watch this replay. Barnes is basically sitting on Hollingshead's right ankle. That could have gotten ugly. I agree with referee Chris Penso when it comes to the other ugly tackle in this one. Kellen Acosta with the high leg on Alex Lopez in the 54th minute, but he's not going in with the studs. Acosta is late and reckless, definition of a yellow. No red for me. Acosta's USU 20 teammate, Jordan Allen. He got a straight red card in Real Salt Lake's match against Crew SC, and it's justified. It might be an honest attempt at the ball, but he's flying in with his left stud showing. Referee Ismail Elfad has no choice but to go red for endangering the safety. The match finished 2 all, and RSL opened the scoring on a pretty nifty set piece play finished by Olmes Garcia. But Andrew Thompson points out to us on Twitter how he thought Joao Plata was offside on the play. We have a new angle from the one shown on the broadcast, and it turns out assistant Frank Anderson got it right. Palata is even with crew number 10, Federico Higuain. We head to Foxborough where the big debate centered around the 29th minute penalty and sending off that sealed the match in favor of visiting Vancouver Whitecaps. It's Andrew Farrell committing the foul on Vancouver's Christian Teixeira. Although it's a slight touch, it's enough to throw Teixeira off balance. It's a foul. And once we've determined it's a foul, I think it has to be a red card. Although Teixeira's positioned to the left of the goal, the foul does deny a shot on goal. That much is pretty clear. What you could argue, however, is that the foul should not have resulted in a penalty. The contact by Farrell with Techeda's arm happens outside the box. So while it's a red, it probably shouldn't have been a penalty if we go by the replay. But referee Alan Chapman awarded the spot kick, and Octavio Rivero made it two zip caps. To the other two Cascadia teams facing off at Providence Park, where referee Jaime Marufo managed a clean game. Just one play to highlight. Before Marufo awarded the free kick that led to Seattle's momentary equalizer, the Timbers wanted a handball whistle against Seattle's Gonzalo Pineda. But I agree with Marufo, who said play on. Pineda had no chance to react. Fault to hand. Next up, Sporting Park, where I thought Colorado Rapids designated player Kevin Doyle could have seen a red card in the 69th minute just seconds after it came into the match. Check out this challenge on Chance Myers. It's not only late, but I think he endangers the safety of his opponent when he goes in studs up with the right leg. Referee Baldomero Toledo instead opts for the yellow. An interesting play to look at about 10 minutes later. Dom Dwyer presses for this ball collected by Rapids goalkeeper Clint Irwin who proceeds to grab his right leg as if he'd been stepped on. So the referee comes over and gives Dwyer a yellow for it, but let's look at it again. How much contact is there really? Maybe a little tap from Dwyer to Irwin's right leg, but nothing more. So to answer your question, Drew Stoudemire on Twitter, no, I didn't think Dwyer deserved yellow. Another caution that was also undeserved in my opinion was the one Eric Ayuk got in Philadelphia in the 62nd minute. He beats Dilly Duca to this ball fair and square, but referee Soren Stoika shows him the card. That yellow was important because in the 77th minute, he got a second one for this flying two-footed studs-up lunge on Ignacio Piatti. But I say forget about a second yellow. That deserved a straight red to me. Either way, Ayuk was off, and that evened the numbers on the field because 10 minutes earlier, it was Montreal's Patrice Bernier who was given his marching orders by Stoika, also for a second yellow. That one was late, and it also stopped the promising attack by the bulk of yellow, and Bernier, the captain, doesn't even protest. And we end at Yankee Stadium, where this incident involving Red Bulls defender Damian Perinel got us a few tweets from Elmer Bonilla and Henry Gage, who wanted Perinel sent off for a second yellow, which they felt should have been shown for a handball after he swung Wadded at the ball. Here's the only problem with that claim. The whistle from referee Mark Geiger had already sounded before Perinel's hand touches the ball. Listen to it for yourselves here. And a wrestling match there, Poku and uh, Perinel, and Poku's got the decision. But forget about the volleyball spike. I'd argue that Perinel should have received a second yellow and subsequent red for swiping at Kwadwu Poku for no good reason. That would have given NYCFC a man advantage for about 12 minutes to make up a two-goal deficit. NYCFC did score first in this one, but Travis Ullman says it shouldn't have counted, and he's right. David Villa was offside on the short corner right here. Now, you might argue, hey, 
Manny Bellucci doesn't really pass the ball to Villa, he just steps on it, and there's no forward motion of the ball. But the laws of the game define interfering with play as, quote, playing or touching the ball passed or touched by a teammate. Bellucci touched it, and when he did, Villa was offside. So the offside should have been called, and the goal should not have stood. But assistant Eric Boria does not flag it, and Thomas McNamara has his third career MLS goal. And before we go, I just want to say you people are awesome! Your tweets using the hashtag Instant Replay continue to help us do our job. On behalf of editor Will Walsh, I'm Simon Borg. See you next time!